Hi, Troy at the Full Set up here, back with another video for you today. And as you can see, we're taking a rare appearance in my lounge. And the reason we're in my lounge is because today what we're going to be making is my 2017 edition of my spare parts lounge PC. Now, running the channel, I go through quite a lot of parts and I do sell a lot of stuff on to find new systems to build, build for the channel. But I also keep a lot of parts as well, especially motherboards, because when I want to do these videos in a couple of years where we look at an old processor, one thing I realised that motherboards were quite hard to get. I also keep the odd graphics card and the odd processor around. Now those items are just sat there collecting dust, so why not make use of them? And that's what we're going to do today. So we're going to build a PC pretty much entirely out of spare parts. I think the only thing I went out and bought for this today was the CPU cooler. That was about it. Now what's changed else from last year as well? Now last year we were using a 880K with a GTX 780 and that was perfectly fine for my 2016 PC. The reason it was perfectly fine is because what we were using was a 50 inch um, 1080p TV which was limited to 60 hertz. So although there was some slight bottlenecks and CPU intensive games, the 880K plus the 780 were perfect, but they did seem to use quite a lot of power. So what else has changed this year then? Well, not a lot. The only other addition is that I've added a new projector. Now, um, a new projector, I've got a projector. Now this projector is 1080p. I'd love a 4K projector, but they're still about four grand. Now the other thing I've changed as well is the TV from last year was a 50 inch TV. That's been dropped down to a 40 inch TV so we can project onto the wall. I still need to get the screen. And I've just recently treated myself to some new floor standard speakers as well to complete the surround sound setup. We've got a 5.1 setup, um, all Yamaha with Yamaha um, on a Yamaha receiver as well. And it absolutely rocks. So the target for this year's PC is exactly the same target as last year's PC, 1080p at 60 frames per second. Why change it? Well, because we want to make a new video. Also, the 880K, like mentioned earlier, did bottleneck a bit, but that plus the 780, having both of them overclocked in a quite a small chassis, we're going to be using the same John's Bow Media Center case from last year, was pumping out quite a lot of heat, um, and I was it was just eating a lot of power as well. So we're going to try and improve power today, and we're going to make the system run a lot cooler. I think that's enough for an introduction anyway, I'm going to take you in, I'm going to do the full build, I'm going to show you some gaming at the end, and then I'm going to come back with my final thoughts. Apart from the RAM, the only thing that's staying in this build from last year's from the 2016 build is the fans. So I'm still going to have the three Arctic F12s and the two Arctic F8s. Um, now these two push in air, these push out, air out, um, and then this fan pushes air out as well. Um, and the reason that we're having air being pushed out here is because it sits next to quite a large AV receiver, which knocks out quite a bit of heat so I don't want heat being drawn into the case. Now, I absolutely love these Arctic fans. Um, they're really cheap. Um, I think I picked these all up for just under £20. Incredibly quiet as well. I would recommend them anyone who's building on a budget. I've also got these two both hooked up to PWM splitters. So that's the only thing that's staying. And if you did want to see, you want to know a bit more about the case with the measurements and dimensions, probably look at the 2016 build because I go into that a little bit further. Now, as for the power supply, the power supply we're using today is my older, a thermal take smart se 530 watt modular power supply now this has got a 140 fan um it's a little tight in here i would recommend like the evga power supply that i had in it last year something with a smaller 120 something with a smaller 120 fan because when we put these hard drive covers over in a bit they can seem to get in the way a bit so i'm just going to get this power supply installed Normally on the builds now, this part of the video, what I would probably do is go around and do some cable management and get everything ready, but we don't really need to overly do that here. You know, the, the case is gonna be out of the way. You're not gonna see it, it's gonna be hidden. So we're gonna start by installing the motherboard. Now the motherboard that we're using is an Asus Z97AR. Now I picked up this motherboard last year for an i5 4690K build. I want it for 42 pounds on eBay, which is an absolute bargain. And the processor that we're using today, I'm sorry, you probably won't be able to see it, it's not an i5 4690K, it's not even an i5. The processor we're using is an i3 4160, which I purchased again last year on eBay, which I think I won for around about 50 pounds. It's a 3.6 gigahertz, dual core, four thread processor. Now there will be some bottlenecks with the graphics card that we're using today, but again, as mentioned at the beginning of this video, we're going for a 60 frames per second is the max that we sort of need. And in fact, even 45 frames per second, because we're gonna be playing on the sofa and we're using controllers, it's really not that noticeable. And the people that are gonna be playing this with me aren't really PC buffs anyway, so they don't know the freaking difference between 30 and 60 FPS. So I've already installed the IO shield. 
this will be a lot quicker than last year's one this is just going to be like a yearly video that we're going to do The power supply and all the cables are in. I've just the only thing I've really added as well is just this split cable because I've only got the Molex cable for my power supply. I've lost all the SAT cables, so I've got that for the power. And normally I have used, but I I've lost it. I normally need an eight-pin power extension for this to come up really nice. So I'm just going to put the eight-pin power to the motherboard in nice. So let's move on then. So one thing I have decided to buy today, um, because obviously I said this is a spare parts build, is a new cooler. A new CPU cooler. Now, the Intel stock cooler is absolutely fine. It keeps this i3 absolutely, you know, really quiet, and the noise isn't too bad. Like, I can't really hear it over the surround sound, but I just don't like it. And I've just anyone that knows me on the channel knows I freaking hate stock coolers. So, but I didn't want to spend loads of money. It's supposed to be a spare parts build. So what I've got is the Arctic Alpine 11 Plus, and as you can see, it's just slightly bigger slightly bigger than the stock cooler it's got mx4 which is the paste that i normally use on the bottom now it will end up being about five to ten degrees cooler not that much cooler than adding you know like a big tower cooler that i can't fit in here but it's also going to be a lot quieter and then when you think about this as well all the money that i would have spent on the cooling for this entire system so that's five fans plus a cpu cooler is under 30 pounds so that's why i absolutely love arctic products you know just couldn't really recommend them couldn't really more recommend them any highly they're like a really good brand to use so the only part that made the grade from last year is 16 gigabytes of hyperx DDR3 running at 1866 megahertz. Now, eight gigabyte is still fine for most games, but we are more than starting to come to the world now where eight gigabyte is not enough Battlefield 1. And also as well, because this is gonna be used by my housemates quite a lot, they are gonna freak out when the PC, basically when this gets a blue screen, not that my computers go blue screens very often, and they freak out. Because they think they broke my computer, and I don't care, because I love fixing stuff. I just don't spill a drink on it. So really, I don't think eight gigs enough. So we're gonna go for the full 16 gigabytes of RAM. For the storage then, I've got a 120 gigabyte SSD. Now I've been using this SSD in a portable sort of caddy for transferring files between the computers and i've just really taken apart a load of pcs recently so i've got some spare 240 so this 120 sat to one side picked it up 30 pounds on ebay though i really do think ebay is the best price for ssds because they're really going up and again for ebay as well this was a one terabyte drive it's been pulled from another system this is second hand i think i had about 200 hours of usage on it when i bought it one terabyte seagate 7200 rpm 22 pounds 50 so 52 pound 50 for ssd plus mechanical storage for games which is an absolute bargain now installing the hard drives is a little bit tricky as you can see i've got my power supply as well taking air out that way again that is because of the av receiver but the issue is is that we end up getting this big cable bunch up in here which gets in the way of putting this one in also again which is what i said when i spoke to people about want to put a few hard drives in so like one in here and one here it really gets in the way of your cables as well so you sort of almost have to flip the power supply the other way and that's also why you want a smaller 120 power supply not a 140 but for me today I'm going to put the power supply power supply too much stuff going on i'm going to put the hard drive in here but i've just got to try and find some washers because the screws are going to fall through that so it turns out there were some washers on this side so these must have fallen out i'm a bit of a nightmare i never put four screws in hard drives because i just take stuff apart so much so we've just got one in each side but that's going to keep that completely stable in there 
haven't got any SATA cables for this build. Where are the SATA cables? I think a right angle one. No, we're not going to get a right angle one in there. So we need a straight. Plug that in in a minute. And as you can see, sort of there as I'm putting the cables down, sort of wrangled loads of stuff under so it doesn't hit that fan as well. It is normally something I have to go back through and check afterwards. Just leave that in there. So for the SSD, that's going to mount in there. So it'll be underneath, so I can still put a DVD drive in it. I'm not using a disk drive today, but I do plan to buy like a 4K Blu-ray player for this. Get all the hard drives and everything properly installed, then we're going to see if I can actually fit the graphics card in, because I'm worried that that's not going to let me fit the graphics card in. Not the easiest case to build in, but then you don't have to be super neat. So I just went to do the graphics card bit of the video and it went completely wrong. I messed it all up on camera and then I had to take all of this bit out. Now, it's not as a struggle to fit as the 780 that we had in it last year. Um, and the graphics card that we're using today is an XFX RX 480 four gigabyte. Now, I've recently bought a 580, which means that I'm not really using this graphics card anymore. And I was thinking about selling it, but really I wanted to put a graphics card in here that I'm not gonna be looking at a lot over the next 12 months. And the reason is, is because this PC has been built like this for a few months now and I keep swapping the graphics cards in it so it has a 1070 in it or it'll have a 1060 in it or it'll have like a 960 in it so all the settings need to be changed all the time and then it has this back in it which means then you've got to remove loads of drivers and stuff and everyone's getting a little bit annoyed with it people just want to play games so, you know it's causing arguments I hope you know that Doing all these videos causes arguments, my girlfriend. It doesn't, she does what she's told. But she just wants to play some Black Ops and then we play Lego Star Wars together, you know, a couple of stuff. So that's what we do. And this graphics card is perfect for it. So here is the 2017 edition of my lounge PC. Everything got in there eventually. It's not the tidiest thing to look at, but who cares? Because this is what I'm gonna do with it. Put that on it, turn it on, and should we play some games? Farewell!
So there's just some gaming footage for you, and I'm really sorry it's not the extensive amount that I normally go into, um, and I wanted to just show it its maximum performance as well, because as you can see, we were going over 60 frames per second. For this setup, I will be using V-Sync, and I really wish that I had an 8 gig RX 480, because then I'd probably have every game set to 1440p at high settings, using AMD um, Virtual Super Resolution, is it VSR, to render the game at 1440p on a 1080p projector, or display. I'm probably going to set that up for a lot of the games anyway, because to be honest, even games like Rise of the Tomb Raider and GTA 5, you can play those games at quite a bit under 60 frames per second. And also to remember, we haven't got any like lounge keyboard, mouse and mouse and keyboard setups going here. We're playing it all on controller. I'm the only one that's really into high refresh rate gaming anyway. None of my friends are into it as mentioned earlier. So I think it's a really good system. Spare parts, I've definitely brought the thermals right down and the temperature over my 880K system from last year. Um, not been too many videos of me of late and there will be more videos coming up in the future. I know a lot of people have been asking me for my RX 580 with the Intel G4560. Would you like to see 1080p or 1440p videos first? I think 1440p would be the one there because I've done a lot of videos of RX um, graphics card and that Intel CPU. I'm also looking at maybe getting a 1080 Ti or do I wait for AMD Vega? I want to know what you think. Should I go Vega or should I get a 1080 Ti? Anyway, if you like the video, tell me why. If you don't like it, tell me why. And I'll be back with a new build, hopefully very soon. Ryzen, another Ryzen build coming. So make sure you subscribe.